Well, it's been a gorgeous weekend here in Lexington, Ohio at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course for Gridlife's Mid-Ohio Meet. Welcome back to a gorgeous Saturday morning. I'm Kyle Heyer, joined by Greg Creamer in anticipation of Gridlife Touring Cup race number two of the weekend. Greg, so far this weekend, lots has gone to plan, but some has not. And we're a little <laughs> bit in a delay right now for GLTC race number two. Just a couple minutes away from getting the command fire engines and roll out for our pace lap and our 15-minute single-class sprint race. But uh, a lot of incidents in engines and things breaking and exploding and all sorts of stuff so we're back uh, behind a little bit on schedule but we're anticipating a really good race here this morning i think this race is going to be spectacular and yeah it's nice and cool this morning so all of the uh, the nos energy drink track battle competitors knew this was the one to push really hard in and uh, some of them pushed a little too hard in terms of mechanical and just uh, having some offs here and there but look at that crowd that's building up and around the track here, uh, getting ready for this second of four Grid Life Touring Cup races. Uh, yesterday's race uh, was absolutely fascinating, and there were some post-race developments that were equally interesting. Yeah, we'll get into those here in just a moment's time. But, of course, the coverage of Grid Life Mid-Ohio Meet is brought to you by Hyundai. Grid Life Live is powered by Hyundai N. Hyundai N, never just drive. And Falcon, the official tire of Grid Life Track Battle. All right, you mentioned the post-race dramas yesterday, <laughs> one of which was your race winner, Paul Curley, was disqualified on the dyno post-race for being 13 horsepower over. He had dynoed earlier in the day, but the cooler temperatures later meant that that car made a little extra power, and Greg, that disqualified him and drops him to the tail of the field for race number two, and that promotes Luke McGrew up into the winning position, so he has got his fourth win of the season, and he'll be starting on pole for the second race. Yeah, and that's a, a huge development, obviously. Paul looking so strong but a little bit too strong and uh, you know obviously it wasn't intentional everything everything checked out fine but that's what sets grid life touring cup apart is the live dyno post race uh, you can immediately find out all right uh, who's there and uh, who's maybe got a little bit of an issue and it helps you uh, obviously if, if you go over you know it's it's costly in terms of disqualification but if you're way under then you know that you've got some sort of an issue here uh, so that sets things just apart a little bit uh, with this series uh, and frankly makes it really really intriguing there's no question about that uh, but yeah you know other interesting developments you know McGrew Swenson uh, right there as well talked to Jeremy after the race and he said I got to figure out a way to make this uh, this Corvette just a little faster because he said I and we know Jeremy's a driver but he just can't hang on right now uh, to those other guys up front. Uh, James Houghton gets promoted into, into fourth. And uh, we heard, uh, obviously, uh, Aaron Lichty say yesterday, he really thought James could be the wild card here. And you think about how James's car works. It has very little arrow on it, it so it gets to run light. It's got some pretty good power in it. And we we're just talking about how, uh, how the arrow here not as critical as it can be on some other tracks. So I think he's going to be, uh, you know, someone to really keep an eye on. Some shots of the stream team around the facility here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Yeah. This was a really accelerated uh, build out for this event. So they did an excellent job here uh, getting this stream good, looking as good as it is. We do also have an update on Eric Cattill for those that uh, were not watching the previous session. Uh, unfortunately, after the engine uh, expired yesterday because of a missed shift, uh, Eric Cattill had to replace an engine yeah. last Last night uh, with an engine from uh, James Houghton, although this morning during a hardship lap, that engine spun a rod and uh, that engine is also out for the count and that will likely end Eric's 2023 season, which is uh, heartbreaking to say the least, Greg, but he just needs some mental rehabilitation time, spend time yep. with the family, grab a beer and spend some summer nights not wrenching on a car for once. I think it'll be really good for him. So while I am, uh, uh, I guess, selfishly sad that he will not be around with us for the remainder of the season. I am excited for next season. He's going to come back bigger, better, yeah. and stronger, as he always does. Cars are rolling on the racetrack here, Greg, in just a moment. For what it's worth, my take on that is I'm not buying that for a minute. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think he's going to think about it for a day or two, have that beer relax a little bit, and then he's going to start hearing, fix me, <laughs> fix me, Lime Rock, fix me. And uh, Hercules will be heading that way once again, so uh, heading into the garage here. But uh, I was just looking at something. And the fascinating thing is, uh, we, yeah, everybody assumed with the DQ of Curly, it was it was going to be a McGrew on pole. It's not. Matan Rosenberg yeah. actually turned a lap 
lap a couple of tenths quicker uh, than uh, Luke did. So that red highlighted uh, Corvette of Matan Rosenberg, the young 19 year old just coming off his first ever win uh, in this championship at Road America is on pole. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch him uh, try to hold off Luke uh, as he held off Jeremy Swenson. Uh, Matan Rosenberg out of Pepper Pike, Ohio in that uh, red and black Corvette that leads yep. the way, Greg. But I think it's about time we roll through the starting lineup here for the beginning of this race. Starting things off on the front row for this race, as you mentioned, Matan Rosenberg in the 484. Luke McGrew starts second in the number seven Corvette. It's Jeremy Swenson in third and James Houghton in fourth, Greg, in that number 41. Absolutely. In fifth, the number 34 Nissan of Austin Hertel and the number 90 S2000 of Matt Waldbaum in seventh, the 55 of Paul Darling, and he is on form this weekend uh, in that new for him vehicle showing his stuff, and a very impressive James Gathers in the 129 starts eight. In ninth place, it's Emil Tab in the 374. Had some issues yesterday with the engine he just transplanted in, but he is ready to rock. Starts ninth in the 374. Gary Wimble, tenth in the number one. Then it's Eric Meadows and Ronnie Vidoc in row number six. And the next row, the 917, Lena a chin an absolutely superb uh, qualifying run for her obviously it's a fast lap in yesterday's race joined by the 132 of jake jornstad who was uh, in a huge duel late in the race yesterday the 166 of ben thorne will start 15th and zach lavoy starts in the 16th spot zach actually had a great run yesterday moved up a lot of places in that race he's got some mojo happening he certainly does and ben thorne starting 15th his best starting position in only his second round uh, being in the top 20 is a great place for him to yeah, start. It, it should be a lot of fun to watch him work his way forward. Eric Jensen starts 17th in the number 184. Tony Marchev 18th in the number 17. Then it's Jeremy Boysen in the number 40 Honda Civic Type R TC car from SRO's categorizations. And then Adam Ulrich starts 20th in the number 4 Corvette. Starting next up is the number 410 of Shukla Salil. Keep an eye on him. He started 24th yesterday, finished 18th. And talking to his coach, Tom O'Gorman, he said, this car is nowhere near prep to full GLTC capability. He said, this kid can drive. Watch him. So we're going to. Starting 22nd, the 85 of Samuel Scott. 23rd, the 71 of Joel Morrison. And 24th, the 202 of Jacob Price. Kevin Zhu rolls off 25th. Went for a ride at turn nine. Dug up some grass at his Honda Civic but his best finish of second place, trying to improve on that here this weekend. Adam Wood, 26th, Derek King, 27th, and the Myriad Motorsports 77. Hans Horpital behind the wheel starts 28th. Starting 29th, the number 14 of Carlos Mendez. Starting 30th, the 911 of Julio Crispin. Starting 31st, the 187 of Chris Adams. 32nd, the 515 of Thomas Moss. It's Matt Corrins and Seth Gale starting in row 17, 33rd and 34th. Then Andy Sundin in 35th. Clayton Fitzpatrick, 36th. Brad Casiba and Di Wynn start 37th and 38th. And in the 39th spot, the 860 of Nathan Manning. The 40th spot will be the 104 of Ben Lynn. 41st will be the 528 of Richard Sawicki. 42nd is the number 32, Danielle, for regular guy racing. She got uh, this seat through a contest, so great for her. And then, uh, unfortunately, Eric Cattell not going to be able to take the start. Paul Curley will then be starting 43rd in that uh, Corvette on-track winner yesterday. Just a little bit too much horsepower on the dyno. He's going to be awesome to watch coming through the field. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this race as we get set to go racing here in Grid Life Touring Cup. Race number two, Greg, they're side by side. Three Corvettes and James Houghton TSX. 12 to 15 minutes go on the clock as we get ready to go racing from Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. It's a beautiful day. These starts have been frantic and wild as we head over to the kink here at turn number three. There's the green flag, and green flag flies. We're racing in GLTC. A nice launch down to turn four. Three wide lead at Jim Jake. Jornstad side by side into the first corner. And Luke McGrew got the nose ahead, heading down in. And no, not able to make it work. Matan Rosenberg, even with that weight of that car. Remember Luke carrying some rewards weight as well. But it's Houghton with a beautiful move inside of Swenson, top of Madness, into third. Still three wide for the majority of the field. Down into turn six. Things tighten up here. But Houghton pulls through on, on uh, Luke McGrew. Can he slot it his second? He does. And a huge start as well, following him through by Matt Walbaum. Started six. I think he might be fourth. Really on the move early. Yeah, Matan Rosenberg trying to sprint away, but Houghton into second place. Look at Walbaum on the outside. If he can cling here, Greg, he might have the advantage into turn 11, but McGrew and now Swenson pull up alongside him, but it's preferred line for the number 90 ASM car, side by side for third. There's the onboard from Houghton. And once again, that overlap is making sure that uh, it gave Walbaum that opportunity, but now it goes back to McGrew. Walbaum still a little bit of overlap through this last turn. So close. Still door to door down the front straightaway as we complete the first 
first uh, half lap or so as we come to the start finish line. Good battle, still side by side. Wall bomb threw him to Grew into third place. What a pass into turn one. I think that was a smart move by uh, Luke McGrew. Side by side through one's tough, but as he lifted, here comes Swenson, and Swenson going to try and thread the needle and go right through them both, maybe up into third. Does he get it done? I think he may have. That was an unbelievable oh. drive, Greg. It is wild here. The start of this race now down the back straightaway. Swenson in the Viking Performance Corvette. It is a drag race that this V8 might win here, but Austin Hurdle, look at him side by side in the background. Is that James Cathers in the 129? What a start for him, too. Yeah, he's having an absolutely stellar weekend, and look at that group just in front of them. Almost three abreast. Here we go. Look at the move by Walbaum again. Deep on the brakes underneath the group. Big wiggle by Luke. Yeah, he's all out of sorts. Through five and open over Madness. Austin Hurdle's there to pounce on him. If he can get that 3,600-pound Z to do what he needs it to do as Houghton tries to start to run down Rosenberg for that lead gap. Look at Vidoc and Wimble back there at the bottom half of the top ten. And Lena Chen having another absolutely great start as well. That 917, that blue S2000. Really aggressive move there. Down into nine. And behind them, Ben Thorne was alongside Eric Jensen. That's a great battle. Just about 15th place for those two as they came up into Thunder Valley. But the front five now separating out, Greg. And now this is a race that demands perfection here to get your car on the right line. Look at Eric Meadows now up the inside late on Ronnie Vidoc into the carousel. And Lena Chin looked like she's coming up on the inside of Jornstad as well. Side by side through Whoa. this last sequence. A big wiggle by Jornstad. And Chin giving him just enough room. Look at this. Side by side down the front straight. And here comes Emil Tab into the mix. The number 374 has a look up the inside. Thinks better of it. Door to door into turn one. Jornstad slides across the nose of Chin. Chin tries to cross them over, but she can't. They stay nose to tail leading one. And I think right up in front of them, uh, the number two of uh, Eric Meadows dropped the right tires at the exit of one. That's what that little dust and debris is. Uh, that's just hard racing at this stage. And that little bit of a battle looked like Tab was able to duck underneath now on uh, Lena Chin going into the uh, Keyhole, and uh, they're still side by side. Lena Chin now and Emil Tab door to door. Zach Lavoie looking on. Tony Marchev looking on. Two very different cars side by side down the, the back straightaway into turn four, Greg. Excellent racing here mid pack in the 166 of Ben Thorne watching all of this out the windshield and only his second event. What an experience. What a baptism here to be racing with all these folks here in the top 10. Oh, Whoa. and look at Lena. She had the overlap. She ran the outside of four, got up alongside Emil Tab on the exit, and now was able to stay. She's really wide, saves it. But she still got overlap. That was fabulous racing offline, and she still flowed a lot of speed. Yeah, Zach Lavoie thought better of it, had an opportunity <laughs> to go up the inside and did not do it as Lena tries to run Tab back down. There in the far left is Ben Thorne chasing Tony Marchev and Zach Lavoie and Lena Chin and more. All for just outside the top 10. Looks like for 13th place there as Tab, Lena Chin, and more battle for position. Oh, some absolutely incredible racing. Meanwhile, up front, you can see it's Rosenberg over Houghton. And I have to uh, I, I tell you, obviously, I missed the last couple of races, but I've been watching them uh, on, on the stream and the like. I think we have a new Matan Rosenberg here. When he fought off Jeremy Swenson to get that win at Road America, I really think the light bulb clicked and he said, I belong. I belong up with these guys. I can do this. And he is driving absolutely brilliantly right now. And look at this scrap by Luke McGrew uh, in the Corvette, then the gray and yellow uh, S2000 and Matt Walbaum. And Austin Hurdle is joining the group in the Nissan. I was going to say, Austin Hurdle is in the mix as well. That's that pink car at the back of the shot here. He has a look at Walbaum here into turn four. Matt's really late on the brakes, leaves the inside lane sort of open for Austin, but not close enough to take advantage of it. Over the crest at five. It's tight here for, oh, there's a spin. Seth Gale at the exit at turn six. The 541. That's a bad spot there, Greg. Yeah, that's, uh, if he can't get moving, that's definitely going to have to be a caution because it's so easy to have that bobble through six and end up right where he is. Uh, so we'll see what's going to happen at this stage. It's, it's up to whether he can get moving on his own again at this point. Uh, but uh, Walbaum, uh, last time by, was in front of McGrew. McGrew's got back around him. What a great scrap this is. Yeah, and Hurdle now hounding the back of the 90 car through turn 11 as well. So Walbaum trying to stick to his top five position, but Hurdle might make it tough. Matan Rosenberg leads the way, but it's not by much over James Houghton. This time through, James Keeps that gap at eight tenths of a second. Jeremy Swenson still holds the fastest lap of the race, though, and he's closing back in on the 41 as well. He is, and as I talked about, Swenson said, I have to figure out a way to make this uh, this Corvette faster. 
either he found something set up wise to be able to do exactly that or he just stopped and did the double espresso this morning because <laughs> that attack and that thread in the needle move up into the keyhole, that's as aggressive as I've seen Jeremy uh, run, and he's not lacking in that, but that was just stellar. Ronnie Vidoc still playing defense for 10th place right now. A good run to have him back in the paddock here. And he had committed to most of the season but had to bail out of Road America. Good to see him back in the, the paddock running in 10th place as the leaders now work their way into turn 4 and 5 and keeping our eyes on that 541 of Seth Gale to see if he can get back rolling and as there's the full course yellow displayed. Greg, full course yellow, the first of the race as a safety car will be deployed. Uh, with about five minutes remaining in this race. Now, we do have the opportunity to extract this car and get back green pretty quick, and if we can do that, they will try to do that. Yeah, clearly, Seth, I don't, you know, it doesn't look like there's anything that broke on the car. Uh, I mean, any contact. Uh, so either he just stalled it and it won't restart, or maybe something broke and that's what pitched him into the spin. If it's just a stall, it's a quick recovery. If it's something broken and they have to bring out uh, a flat toe, I mean, a, a, a flatbed or whatever, that's going to change the dynamic of things here. But under caution, it's not going to really affect the three leaders too much because they were pretty close anyway. But Luke McGrew has been really fast, and what it does is it brings Luke, Matt Walbaum, Hertel, all of these guys right back up onto the back of it. If we do get a restart, uh, this the whole dynamic of this race could change. It, it certainly will change, and we also have a, a car that I believe will get a wave around here. That's the, the 32 regular yep. guy racing car with uh, with the scholarship winner behind the wheel. But uh, out front in the pace car here this weekend, I believe Adam Jabay is driving the pace car this weekend. No Mike Cohen, unfortunately, couldn't Good. join us for this one. But uh, I'm hoping that this is nice and quick, Greg. But if we do end under yellow, uh, let's consider who's in the top 10 right now. I have to give huge credit to James Cathers and Paul Darling, yeah. both of which would be making their first ever top 10 shootout appearance uh, should they stay here yes. if this race ends as is. So, we again, after race two, we set the race three grid by finishing order of race two. But the top 10 requalify in a sprint style shootout where they each get one flying lap to lay down their best time. And that's how we we set the top 10 for race three later today. Yes, yeah, single car qualifying to reset the top 10. That's cool. You know, while we have this moment, I do want to, uh, a couple of shout outs to, uh, to drivers. Oftentimes, you know, with a 50 car field, it's tough to cover everybody in the field. And a couple of, uh, of drivers had some really amazing runs yesterday. Uh, notable among them, the 42 Zach Lavoy in the uh, Honda S2000. He went from 22nd to 15th in that race yesterday. That was a huge run for him. Uh, Joe Morrison also had a really good race, uh, up eight spots during the course of the race. And uh, there was one other driver who had a really good, Jacob Price in the 202, uh, that's the Mazda MX-5, uh, went from 32nd to 22nd, 10 spots made up during the course of the race. Um, Andy Sundin went from 40th to 33rd, uh, and another good run was Dai Nguyen. Uh, and I wanted to mention him, especially he went from 41st to 35th. And he had an off in testing and damaged the front of that car. So I'm sure he was a bit tentative in, in qualifying, making sure uh, that everything was okay. Uh, come the race, he decided to get after it and go after it and doing a nice job. But for Zach, you know, once you start to crack that top 20, those passes get harder. Because everybody up in that sharp end, uh, obviously, uh, you know, they're just faster, you know, whether it's the car, whether it's the driver, and those passes get more difficult, and he still made a bunch of them. So uh, really, really some, some great drives by a number of drivers back in the pack. So for those that are not familiar with Grid Life Touring Cup and how our timer works here, we run between 12 and 15 minute races. Now, if we get a full course yellow, we could get the opportunity to run another uh, another couple of laps. However, I do see a white flag being displayed. I can't see if this is the only white flag or if this is just for a slow moving vehicle here, Greg, but it looks like displayed from the start stand, this will be our white flag lap here. I think we're behind schedule yeah. a little bit and have to make up some time. So we will end at the scheduled distance, uh, which is uh, a little bit of a bummer. However, uh, it, in the future, should we get another yellow, we do have the option to extend the race slightly to get another lap or two of racing. It does not appear that we will get that this time. Yeah, that's unfortunate, obviously, but uh, uh, I'll tell you, I am so impressed with what I see Matan Rosenberg doing. And you know, there's the old adage in racing. At first win can be really tough to get. When you get it, 
oftentimes the next couple come a lot easier. I guess so. Uh, but that was, uh, I remember Baton, uh, he uh, started on pole, but at the flag, it was McGrew who got the better start and got a serious almost car length ahead, and Matan just out-deeped him down into turn four, made it stick. And uh, obviously, Houghton and uh, Walbaum at that point trying to fight up through the pack a little bit uh, gave him just that little bit of breathing room. Uh, then Houghton and Swenson uh, closed up on him, uh, so we don't know what would have happened there. But obviously, this is obviously more uh, than just a stall uh, because uh, he was out of the car, and they're trying to figure out exactly what to do at this Yeah, stage, so. I, I think yep. that, that's the challenge. It had yeah. just been an easy tow. He might have gotten one more opportunity to go back racing. Uh, it is Scott Robertson behind the wheel of the pace car right now, yeah, is what okay. I was told by Colleen. So uh, Scott Robertson jumping behind the wheel and, and doing us a favor by uh, piloting the, the safety car today. Often a racer here. And yeah. And uh, typically, we've got a pace car program uh, where we select, uh, basically, on our Instagram, we do a pace car program. Uh, What's the, I guess a raffle process? Contest. Yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Where users can submit their vehicle to be a GLTC pace car. And if we like your car, uh, we give you some tickets to come on out and, and you get to ride along in the pace car as we, we use it for the race. And I'm not sure if this is one of our winners or not, but uh, often uh, we have some really neat pace cars that we, uh, we get to use. So really neat stuff. Well, what was the pace car recently that had the huge speaker on the oh. top? Looked like an oh. old, like an old Crown Vic kind of. That, that was a fabulous car. The Blues Brothers. Yeah, it was the Blues, that's what Blue, it was. The Blues Brothers mobile. Yep. And then you've also had the Wiener mobile. Yes, <laughs> back in it's, 2020 it's at PPIR, I believe yep. that was. So that was a lot of fun. But I, how do you? I, whoever was driving it, that uh, that Wiener mobile, because there's that minimum speed you have to maintain. That thing's got to be top heavy. It, it was top heavy, and it was at one of the tightest tracks on the calendar, <laughs> which was Pikes Peak International <laughs> oh Raceway, goodness, the right. infield roval. So it was it was not happy about that. All yeah, that was things. probably two wheeling around some of those corners. Yeah. But uh, with that, uh, Greg, we're going to be rolling back around to the checkers. And all the dramas aside, Matan Rosenberg is going to cling on for his second victory in yeah. his career. Most recently, uh, the victory at Road America in race four. This one held off a different driver, this time James Houghton. And James was close, but he, he wasn't getting up to it to the point where I think another lap or two would have done it for him. I think Rosenberg is, is quick and playing defense really, really well. Yeah, absolutely. And that... The best thing you can do, Matan's car is one of the heavier cars in the field, uh, but it's heavy because it's, it's one of the more powerful cars in the field. And one of the nice things you can do when you get to the front in a car that, uh, even if it's a little heavier, if it has more power, is you over slow and you kill the guy's momentum. And Houghton is definitely in a momentum car. So you over slow a little bit in the corner, then you use that the big torque of the V8 to pull out and give you the gaps. And, and we saw obviously with a little bit too much horsepower but you, uh, we saw that's what uh, what uh, curly was doing yesterday out of the keyhole mm -hmm. uh, he was you know slower in and you can see luke all over him through the keyhole and he overslowed then he would jump out of that and make it work so that's part of the game you know you, you know might think isn't that dirty driving heck no uh you do what you need to obviously you don't chop block and hit people but sometimes you you have to strategize a little bit and you use the strengths of your car and you try and affect the weaknesses of the other cars in so doing that's part of this chess game so i thought we were white flag last time around but greg that was a standing white the previous lap so that right. was for a, a safety vehicle but we just got the waving white so this will be the final lap that's one of those uh, flag rules greg that uh it, it's persistent it's been that way yep. for many years but a white flag displayed at a flag stand that is standing is for a slow moving vehicle uh typically i assume when it's at the start finish line it's for a last lap but it's not unless it's waving so there's different yep. differentiation yep. and how the flag is displayed that will uh, that will determine that so what if there's some suspension damage on this also yeah. that might be leading it well that's what uh, i was i was speculating that maybe something broke on the car and that's what pitched him into this spin uh so uh, obviously they've got some issues so the tilt bed is out there and uh we'll get that taken care of but uh nonetheless uh it wasn't a long amount of green flag racing but what we had was sure exciting. It, it was. And <laughs> it was I'm, great. I'm really excited for race three later today. Of course, we've got our top 10 shootout, which we get to see Paul Darling and James Cathers, two relatively say. new drivers. Oh, man, it's so yeah, exciting. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about Darling and yeah. what he's doing. But how about 
Gaithers. Yeah. Uh, really impressive here. And uh, actually finishing in front of, of Paul Darling. So, boy, there's a, an attention getter. And Ronnie Vidoc also, I don't think, has made a top 10 shootout before either. I think you're right. I, th yeah. I think that's right. Because we didn't do one at CMP, and yeah. we did one at Gingerman, but Ronnie had some problems that weekend. So it'll be Ronnie's first showing in a top 10 shootout. I think it's been a little while since Gary Wimble's been in one. Uh, but the rest of the field has been in it a couple of times. But it is always a thrilling show. And that will be uh, just after lunch, I believe, which we're coming up on here pretty shortly. But we can't declare a winner officially until they take the checkered flag as uh, they continue to follow the safety car around. Greg, uh, even under yellow, these positions do count. And if you were to have a problem right now and couldn't finish the race, yep. the, the field is frozen. But if you can't maintain pace car speed, then you don't get to keep that position. So we're not going to call it until it's <laughs> over. I've made that mistake too many times. <laughs> well, the greatest example of that I ever saw was a number of years ago, World Challenge. And in the second version of the Cadillacs racing in World Challenge with Johnny O'Connell at Long Beach, when uh, a late yellow came out, right before it came out, somebody threw up a piece of uh, stone right through his radiator. Oh. And get the white flag, white and yellow flag together, and Johnny's running around. All of a sudden, smoke starts to come out. Water starts coming out. He couldn't finish the race and led comfortably when that yellow came out and never got to the line. So it happens. Well, here's the good news is the checkered flag is in hand of the starter. And that means that when we come back around this time, as long as that last couple hundred yards is completed without incident, it will be Matan Rosenberg's second victory in Grid Life Touring Cup. 19 years old out of Pepper Pike, Ohio. And on the side of his car, all the partners and people that make it happen for him, auto interests, Northern Ohio scrap service, across the stripe, checkered flag for Matana Rosenberg, James Houghton second, Jeremy Swenson third, Luke McGrew fourth, Matt Waldbaum fifth, then Austin Hurdle, Cathers, Darling, Wimble, and Vidoc, the rest of your top ten. Second win in three races. Not too shabby. I, not shabby at all. And as they come through here, obviously another podium for Swenson. Um, so uh, he found some speed in that car. That's what he needed. Obviously, he's the guy leading in the points right now, trying to wrap a championship up here. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out here. Uh, but McGrew there in that four spot. Uh, but again, another uh, really strong run. That battle, Jornstad, Tab, and Chin was absolutely superb. Zach Lavoie had a great view of all of that. Eric Jensen right there in the 18th again. And look at Shukla Salil. Uh, we were talking about him. Uh, Tom O'Gorman said, you know, you know, the kid, because he's back in the order a little bit, uh, you know, finally said to Tom, he said, Am I good at this? Is, is this okay? <laughs> and he went, look, your car is not prepped anywhere near to this, and you're knocking on the door of the top 20. You're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing, and when you get the right car underneath you, you're going to be fun to watch. So uh, that's really cool to see. Yeah, I'd say so. 17th place, Ben Thorne from the Gears and Gasoline Crew at the Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, Honda Civic, uh, that is his career best finish as well, I believe now. So 17th place for him, nicely done. And of course, Seth Gale down there in 41st. Hopefully, whatever is broken, he can get resolved on that car as he was the one that brought out the full course yellow that will halt this second race and bring it to conclusion. So, Greg, final thoughts here on race two. An excellent battle while we had the racing that we did for the first, uh, you know, eight to ten minutes or so. But we still have two races left to go. And this next race is set by finishing order of this race with a requalification coming up for the top 10 in this one. Yeah, that uh, that single car uh, qualifying for that top 10 is going to be spectacular. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see, too, because, uh, you know, you've got the Corvettes with that big launch power. Uh, you've got the other cars that are momentum cars. Uh, you know, Houghton, has, as, uh, as Aaron Lichty said yesterday, he, he just had a feeling that he's going to be somebody to watch uh, as these races continue to unfold. Uh, but we've seen battles no matter where we're looking, and it, it is often the case. But it just seems every time we come to Mid-Ohio, they're even more fierce. Uh, I, I, I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. It, it, it's going to be a blast. So with this race completed, we're going to step away for a few minutes, and we've got drift coming up. We've got to check the revised schedule and see how the day is going to progress before we commit to that. But we'll let you know what the schedule is going to be when we come back here in just a few minutes' time from Grid Life Mid-Ohio Meet in Lexington, Ohio. Kyle Heyer alongside Greg Kramer. We'll see you in a few. Born on the track, bred on the mountains, raised on the podium, ready for anything and everything. Learn more about our entire line at falcontire.com. 
Owning a car can be expensive. It can also be confusing. Uh, what? And when things don't go right, there's no doubt it could be frustrating. <clears throat> but it can also be a lot of fun. And for those reasons, FCP Hero exists. Check this out. Do you and your car a favor and head over to fcpro.com to learn more. Chris Forsberg. And when it comes to classics and high performance cars, Island Trust America's number one racing oil, Valvoline VR1. It's built on Valvoline's long legacy in racing, so I can continue to build my own. With two times more zinc than the industry standard, VR1's high performance formula is tested on the track and trusted on the road to ensure your engine is protected from metal to metal contact. And I use it so much, I haven't got my car on the bottle. That's why whether I'm racing or cruising, I protect everything I drive with Valvoline. Valvoline. Trusted for over 150 years.